This micro lecture uh, briefly covers some of the major forest regions in the United States. If you look at a map of the uh, eastern U.S., um, <coughs> recently uh, scientists have broken down um, the eastern forest into several other regions, but one of the main ones, and especially here in uh, western North Carolina, is the mixed mesophytic forest, which represents one of the most biologically diverse temperate regions of the world. Uh, mesophytic, uh, of course, means adapted to moist conditions, and uh, with the rainfall that we do get in the western part of the state and in the Appalachians, uh, that's that's where that terminology comes from. The uh, forest communities in this region often support more than uh, 30 different canopy tree species at a single site, uh, have a very rich understory of ferns, different types of fungi, perennial and annual herbaceous plants, and the freshwater communities in this particular region are some of the uh, richest temperate freshwater ecosystems in the world uh, with a large diversity of uh, mussels, freshwater fish, crayfish, and other invertebrates. The uh, northern coniferous forest, which uh, is kind of the area along the Canada-U.S. border, um, is dominated by evergreen conifers. And while there are some areas that, that do mix with broadleaf deciduous trees, um, some of the forests in the more northern latitudes don't necessarily support deciduous trees or flowering plants in general since the climate, since the harsh climate, doesn't support insects, which of course are necessary for pollination in many broadleaf species. The understory of the northern coniferous forests uh, also contains a variety of uh, herbaceous and herb and shrub species and is a very uh, commercially important forest. Um, some of the features of the northern coniferous forests are limited light penetration, which, which limits the types of, of understory vegetation, uh, primarily mosses, lichens, and ferns. And the forests are ideally shaped to handle the harsh conditions in the wind. Uh, uh, conifer trees have, uh, have kind of a wind deflection capability uh, with their needle-shaped uh, needle leaves. leaves. The northern hardwood forest uh, extends down a little bit into the end of the Appalachians. We have some species uh, that, that, that kind of mix uh, from that region. Your important hardwood species in the northern hardwood forest are beeches, maples, hemlocks, and, and birch trees. And it also extends westward uh, towards the Great Lakes as well. Um, here in the Appalachians, and when you get into the hardwood forests in the what we you know considering the southeast, uh, those would be considered your central broadleaf forests. And while you you do have some pines in there, uh, your oaks, your hickories, uh, maples, and poplars are your dominant species in the forests. Um, as it says on item F, there you do see some Virginia pine, some pitch pine. Uh, some hemlock at the higher elevations, but the majority of this region is dominated by deciduous uh, broadleaf trees, and this is where your high-quality uh, hardwood lumber comes from. Uh, in the southern forests in the southeastern part of the, the, the state, um, uh, pines dominate the landscape, and this is the region that uh, most agree have the, has the most uh, potential for meeting the future lumber and pulpwood needs of the U.S. because you do have higher growth rates. You are able to um, uh, grow pines uh, commercially and, and do more tree farming at a certain extent. As the soils change to more sandy soils, of course the pine species vary and moving from uh, loblolly into uh, a slash pine and longleaf pine. And this southern forest ecosystem also, uh, or pine ecosystem, supports um, uh, other rare and endangered animal species. The red cockaded woodpecker, indigo snake, and gopher tortoise are all kind of in the sand hills, sandy uh, uh, pine forest areas of the south. But you do have important hardwood species as well, including um, oaks, uh, yellow poplar, maple, and uh, walnut trees too. The bottomland hardwood forest kind of uh, occupies the area mainly along the Mississippi River and is dominated by, uh, 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 by oaks, uh, black gum, or uh, water tupelo, and uh, whoop, missing the last one there, and, and cypresses as well. And this hardwood forest is, among the most, is, is one of the most productive uh, of the areas just due to the highly fertile soil. It receives a, lo a lot of sediment fine sediment from the regular flooding of the river systems. So the soils there are rich and it does support um, some high quality hardwoods. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest we have uh, temperate rainforests. Uh, there's enough rainfall in these areas to be considered rainforests. 
And these are the forests located in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. If you've ever had the opportunity to see the giant sequoias or the redwoods, <clears throat> amazingly big trees, big forest. And these areas are currently the most productive regions of, of the U.S. They're kind of the, I guess, the last to be logged. Whereas your, uh, you know, uh, central hardwood forests um, had a lot of uh, impact from from colonial settlement and the, and the land clearing that went on there. The Pacific Northwest is still being uh, is still being cut, and provides um, a majority of the um, of the annual uh, or a lot of the annual lumber produced in the in the U.S. Um, some other conifers there include Douglas fir, uh, Sitka spruce, and sugar pine, which which are some of the larger uh, pine species in the U.S. Uh, a couple of more minor forested regions. The Rocky Mountain Forest extends from uh, Canada all the way down to Mexico and still produce a very high producer of lumber, um, primarily occupied by western white pine, ponderosa pine, lodgepole pine, uh, with some spruces and firs spread out uh, also. And uh, in South Florida, we do have tropical forests in the U.S., and it's the smallest forested region in the U.S., and, and mainly includes uh, a few sp species of mahogany, lots of mangrove trees, and different types of bay trees. But you know, commercially, a very uh, a very uh, minor point or or uh, smaller area of production. It's also important to note when we're talking about for these forest types, where you know, there's not a a breaking point or a, or a um, a clear-cut line distinguishing one forest type from another. You do have different types of forest types that uh, mix within certain regions. This particular uh, slide just shows how forests are mixed in the northeast from spruce for fir forest to northern hardwood forests. You have central hardwoods overlapping in the transitional hardwood area. So uh, there is a lot of diversity and there is mixing within re regions. I just wanted to make that clear. And uh, the same thing within states. Um, just to use Alabama as an example, uh, the northern part of the state is uh, you know, dominated by oaks, hickories, and pines, but there, there is, an, is a mix there. Um, the kind of band running through the center of the state um, is an area of kind of a chalky soils kind of near, near the Black Belt uh, that's, that has very different production potential than the oak, hickory, pine forest in the area to the south of that area, which is the Loblolly uh, shortleaf pine area. Uh, there are bottomwood hardwoods along the uh, bay areas and rivers of Alabama and um, uh, in the kind of band of very southern Alabama you have the longleaf slash pine ecosystem uh, where soils become a lot more sandy.